Okay, so for our next lab, lab 8, we're going to be configuring our vNetwork standard switches and our standard switch policies. I'm already logged in to our vSphere client, the non-web version. You can actually do this, uh, the easiest way that i found is just by going to our hosts, expanding out our data center and selecting which hosts we want to do. First thing to note is that our virtual switch 0 is turned on uh, by default. It's, it's always there. And we're going to be uh, creating some additional switches as well. Notice that we only have our VM NIC 0, but our ESXi hosts have 6 NICs. Uh, so we don't want to keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to be adding some additional uh, NICs to our VS, uh, switch 0. Uh, if you click on properties, you can see what we have set up. If we go to network adapters, you can see which adapters are within the switch. We're going to be adding our VMware NIC 1. Notice again that the address range is the appropriate range. Uh, we're going to be selecting our 128 port switch and it's going to be uh, our management network. And then click finish. Once it's done, we're going to go ahead and close it. You'll notice that now we have two physical adapters in that virtual switch. An important note here is to make sure that you understand that the management network is the controlling network to manage our ESXi hosts. Management network. That's going to be the one that for managing. So we're going to be creating an additional switch. Uh, we're actually going to be looking at two additional switches, but we're doing them one at a time. To create a secondary virtual switch, we're going to be clicking on Add Networking. Are we going to be adding a network for VMs, or are we going to be adding a network for advanced management? For example, our vMotion, our iSCSI, our host management, or our NFS. For this example, we're going to be adding a VMware kernel. What NICs are we going to be adding? For our example, we're adding our VMware Network 2. Uh, this network is only going to have one uh, switch for now, so we'll just select that one and then make sure to name it this one is going to be for our vMotion vMotion is this port going to be used for vMotion? yes it is imperative that you pay attention to the network label because we're using standard switches as they range between our different ESXi hosts our network names are going to matter. So if we do vMotion on ESXi1 and we do vMotion all lowercase on ESXi2, those are two separate networks. Even though they're named the same, they're case sensitive. Make sure that you pay attention to that. Networking type, we're doing IPv. If we're doing IPv6, we could do IPv6 if we were doing a combination of both we would select the appropriate response. From there, again, make sure this is for vMotion. Hit Next. Our subnet, or our IP and our subnet mask for this network is 192.168.1.21. And this is using a slash 24. Notice the gateway is grayed out. For our vMotion, if our vMotion had a reason to leave the local network, we could change that. Uh, why 1? Because 1, on our very first lab, we set up several different networks, and we denoted that w uh, network 192.168.1.x was going to be for our vMotion. And verify that is the correct settings, that is all the information. And when you're finished, or when you're ready, go ahead and click on Finish. And it will create our secondary switch. We're going to be setting up another switch. 
we're gonna call it this is gonna be for our fault tolerance we're gonna be using our VMware NIC 3 we're gonna make sure to call it FT both capital this is gonna be used for fault tolerance the IP address for this one is going to be in the two network so 192.168.2 uh, for the dot 21 you'll notice that our fourth octet for this host is 21 so we're just trying to be consistent however in a production environment you probably will be using different uh, IP addresses hopefully verify those are all the correct settings and then the last one will be our iSCSI switch add networking again VMware kernel this time we're selecting our last two usable uh, NICs. We're calling this one iSCSI. One. Again, make sure that you're... It's case sensitive, so make sure that you, you do that correctly. Uh, it is not being used for vMotion. It is not being used for fault tolerance. It is not using for fault management. So make sure none of those are selected. Once you're ready, click on Next. We already know that our iSCSI network is 3 because our iSCSI network on vCenter is 192.168.3.20 so this one will be 3.21 and verify all the information and go ahead and finish. So when you are done you should have four virtual switches, one that was predefined, and then we're adding the additional three. Now that we did it on one, let's go ahead and hop over to two, and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, again, VMware kernel. We're adding just the first NIC. Before we do that, we want to add the first NIC to our management. So both our switches, are both our virtual NICs are there on our virtual switch. The second switch is going to be for our vMotion, that's just going to use our vNIC2. V. Again, case sensitive. And this one is going to be used for vMotion. One dot twenty two. Verify that information is correct. Verify the name is correct. Add the second virtual switch. This one is going to be for our fault tolerance. Capital F, capital T. 192.168.2.22. Oh, fat fingered that one. Again, double check your settings, make sure they are correct. We're going to add in our last virtual switch, which will use our last two NICs. This will be called iSCSI 1. Make sure none of them are checked.
Make sure you, again, use the appropriate IP address. And let's just double check by going between both of them to verify that they are all the same name. Vmotion, FT, iSCSI1, Vmotion, FT, iSCSI1, all the appropriate nicks are there. So that actually really is all we have to do. But I want to look at some of the additional settings. So I'm going to go to our vSwitch three properties. Notice that it has an MPU size of 1500. That's a normally an exam question, so bear away, uh, make sure to know that. Uh, what type of security, what type of traffic shaping is there? Is there failover? I also want to click on this iSCSI 1 vMotion and IP. Notice this is going to be used for iSCSI, but it says iSCSI port binding disabled. That is just because we haven't finished setting up our iSCSI switch just yet. We just added the NIX and that's it. So we're not done yet. We actually have a next lab to set up the rest of our iSCSI portion. I want to double check the virtual switch too. Again, I'm looking at specifically the FT network. Notice that fault tolerance logging is enabled but management iSCSI is not, neither is vMotion. We want to make sure we pay attention to that. Again, notice the default MPU size. We'll do the same thing for virtual switch one. Looking at the vMotion network, notice vMotion is enabled. It's always better to double check your settings. That way, we, before we, we move forward, we know that they are correct. And once we verify that on both of them, uh, same thing with our networking addresses, that they are all good. Uh, we should be done for this lab. I always like to double check, just because you never know. It's really easy to fat finger something, and not catch it till later. Alright, this lab is done. Thank you.